Good morning, everyone. It is good to be with you as we gather in God's house to worship and as we gather together online. Uh, we will begin our uh, worship with the ringing of the church bell. It looks like Lane is going to ring the church bell this morning. We've got to ring the church bell. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to everyone in person and online. I uh, wanted to share some announcements with you. Uh, if you are at Lost Creek this morning, you uh, may have noticed some streamers on the bushes out front. Uh, we got toilet papered by the Lutherans uh, because they won the toilet paper bowl. Um, I forget exactly how much we all collected, but um, it was a good amount. And uh, we are very grateful to uh, everyone who made their donations uh, for, uh, of toilet paper to the food pantry. This morning is Special Offering Sunday at Lost Creek. We're collecting our Joyful Noise offering. And at McCoysville, we are collecting the uh, Meals and Wheels offering. Dana is collecting uh, offerings for the Women's World Mission offering, and uh, we need to collect those today so that we can get those uh, sent, our pledge sent in. McCoysville is having their annual meeting of the congregation after worship this morning um, down at McCoysville. Lost Creek continues their uh, adult Sunday school, and everyone is welcome to come and join us. This Thursday, uh, February 24th, will be the last uh, session for our Jesus and Women Bible Study. We'll take a week off, and then we will start the uh, Bible study with Max Lucado's He Chose the Nails. Please let me know, especially if you're going to be joining us uh, online, um, if you would like to, be, to, to receive the emails for those, uh, the Max Lucado Bible Study. Next Sunday, uh, Lost Creek will collect its uh, building fund offering. Want to warn the session that because of uh, Ash Wednesday being March 2nd, we are going to have our session meeting on Tuesday, March 1st at 7 p.m. Also coming up in Lent is the uh, McCallishville Mini Ministerium's uh, Community Services. Lenten services, and they uh, will be virtual again this year. Uh, each of the pastors will be recording a sermon and worship service in their own sanctuary, and will upload it for release at 7 p.m. on the correct date. Uh, the theme is questions in the wilderness, and I will be kicking off Ash Wednesday, uh, March 2nd at 7 p.m., addressing the question, what have we done? So we invite you to join the McAllisterville Ministerium uh, Facebook page and to worship with us throughout Lent. Uh, the men's the Port Royal men's prayer breakfast will start March fifth. It's uh, seven a.m. at the Port Royal Community Building. Of course, you can get uh, gift cards from Tom Heckman, and that supports our discretionary fund. Are there any other announcements? Hearing none, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to our meditation music.
And we'll light our Christ candle. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. To all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. Our scripture lesson for our service this morning is from John chapter 7, verse 53, to eight, chapter 8, verse 11. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Then each of them went home, while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, uh, we are commanded to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with a woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. The Lord always blesses the reading the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for your blessing on the church in this place. Here may the faithful find salvation and the careless be awakened. Here may the doubting find faith and the anxious be encouraged. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful comfort. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the aged find consolation and the young be inspired. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. And I invite everyone to pass the peace. Peace be with you and also with you. Well, you're getting a little lackadaisical there. <laughs> so uh, also, we want to extend peace to those worshiping with us at home. And some of the names that I can see, uh, Barb H. and Alicia, uh, Noreen, always there uh, welcoming everyone. Robin, good to have you with us. That's right. Hi. Uh, I think Isla just said hi to you, Robin. Uh, Rose is with us. And Nan. And Debbie. And Tessa. And Barb. And Rich. Um, Faye's with us. Um, let's see. Here. Dawn is worshiping with us this morning. And Barry's with us, and Linda, and Dave and Sandy, and he, uh, Hazel and Reese are also with us, and Mom. Hi, Mom. Good to see you. <laughs> so, um, peace be with you, all worshiping with us at home, and those whose names I didn't call, and those who uh, call and listen on the telephone, and from them, peace to all of you. Let us join together in singing hymn number 41, When Morning Gilds the Skies. Please stand.
Yes, well, life is mine, my canticle divine. May Jesus Christ be praised. Sing this eternal song through all the ages long. May Jesus Christ be may be seated. If you would turn in your bulletins to our prayer of confession and let us join together in confessing our sins to God and to one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. And having been assured of God's grace and mercy in our lives, let us respond with an affirmation of faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's stand again and sing the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. As we turn to our time of prayer, this week we, uh, the ministry in our presbytery that we are praying for is Central Presbyterian Church and the Reverend Scott Bowerman. Central strives to be an intergenerational, diverse community that welcomes all people as Jesus did. The church values worship that draws eyes toward God, community that inspires relationship, service that supports the neighborhood, and learning that draws us all closer to God. Let us pray for the leadership of the pastor in session as they continue to experience and share the warmth of faith and the strength of Christian community. So please keep Central Presbyterian Church in your prayers. And we're going to look at our VIPs here. If uh, anybody watching at home is having a uh, birthday, then we invite you to uh, let us know. And this is the 20th, right? So um, Mary Page has a birthday coming up. Are you going to come up so we can sing happy birthday to you? No? No? Okay. Uh, Monday is Mary's birthday along with Ruth. Are you going to come up so that we can sing happy birthday to you? That'd be great. Yeah. Okay, come on up. And Louise Basher has a birthday on Tuesday. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries? You know what? You could go. Tell you what. Why don't you go back there with uh, Mary?
Well, thank you all at home for uh, being patient with us as we sing happy birthday to our birthday people here in the sanctuary. Um, we're also uh, sharing good news and um, challenges. Um, if you have a specific name that you want us to pray for, we invite you to, if you're worshiping at home, to uh, send it to us uh, on Messenger or on text, and we will include them in our prayers at the end of the service. Um, are there any uh, joys that we want to share, uh, general joys that we want to share this morning? Well, it's great to see all the young that are there. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. We're very glad to have the young people in, in worship with us today. Good to see you guys. Well, I'm glad that we have a good young minister like Brandon. <laughs> Thank you. Young. I like that. <laughs> Uh, we also want to thank uh, everyone who came down to McCoysville yesterday and helped with the uh, food pantry distribution. Uh, we served uh, eight, eight families while we were down there, and we had volunteers from Lost Creek and from uh, Lower Tuscarora and a few other churches down there, um, as, uh, along with the McCoysville clan. So thank you all for that. Yeah. Any other joys? We do rejoice in the good-naturedness of the Lost Creek congregation getting toilet papered, and nobody came in and said, who messed up our front yard? <laughs> um, but, uh, and we've also, uh, also been encouraged to get them back, so we'll have to come up with something. Uh, and we rejoice with Trinity. They uh, just uh, welcomed their, first, their new pastor, Karen Ward. She moved in on Monday, Valentine's Day. What a day to move in on. And uh, this is her first Sunday in the pulpit there at Trinity. So uh, God bless everyone at Trinity. Uh, any uh, concerns we want to lift to the Lord? Uh, we're obviously praying for God's uh, peace to settle upon Ukraine and Russia and the United States and NATO. Um, I believe the Olympics are either over or are, are ending. Uh, we I probably get to see the end ending ceremony tonight, but um, thankful for God's protection over everybody there for the Olympics. Um, praying for the center of the United States as they dealt with more snowstorms and uh, tornadoes. Anything else? Okay, let us bring our joys and concerns to the Lord in prayer. Each of our petitions ends, Lord, in your mercy. I invite you to respond to our prayer. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together and proclaiming the good news to the world, that all may believe you are love, turn to your ways, and live in the light of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you sent us a Savior, Christ Jesus, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace on earth and put down greed, pride, and anger which turn nation against nation and race against race. Speed the day when wars will end and the whole world accepts your rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that your children may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or feel threatened by. Teach us to live together in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick. Hear especially the prayers we lift to you in the silence of this time.
cheer those in need by your word and bring healing as a sign of your grace. Stand with those who sorrow that they may be sure that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall separate them from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, whose word we trust, whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth. We pray through Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, each week we are reading one of the Psalms, making our way through the book of Psalms. And this morning, Tessa Monroe is going to read Psalm 7 for us. A reading from Psalms chapter 7. Plea for help against persecutors. A Shagan of David, which, the, which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush, a Benjaminite. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, or like a lion they will tear me apart. They will drag me away with no one to rescue. O Lord God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my ally with harm or plundered my foe without cause, then let the enemy pursue and overtake me. Trample me, trample my life to the ground and lay my soul in the dust. Rise up, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered around you, and over it take your seat on high. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come and come to an end, but establish the righteous, you who test the minds and hearts, O righteous God. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness and sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Thank you, Tessa. Um, oh, I, one other joy I was going to share was uh, my mom is worshiping with us this morning, and so I don't want to hear any complaints about how early the service is. She's watching it at 6 a.m. her time. So uh, let's uh, join together in singing hymn number 272, Just As I Am. Please stand. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to
You may be seated. Sociologists have been doing a lot of studies on the decline of the church in America. Why are churches getting smaller and smaller and smaller? And they've identified different groups. There's the nuns in our, in our nation who just don't have any religious affiliation at all. There's the um, spiritual but not religious group, uh, people who believe in a god, um, have a, a, a form of faith, but they just don't want to participate in organized religion. But there's another group that is being identified um, as churches get smaller and smaller, and that's the Duns. And I think I may have talked about this before. The Duns are people who uh, have spent years in the church, decades. Often they are very invested in their congregations, Often they are leaders uh, within their congregations. But they have been hurt so many times by the church that they are done with it. They just walk out the door one day and they want nothing to do with organized religious services again. And there's different things that can cause that kind of pain. Uh, sometimes the, the pain comes from a church that uh, puts more allegiance to a political party than to, God, to Christ himself. And that uh, political party seems to become their God rather than Christ. Sometimes it's people playing power politics within the church. Uh, the, you know, somebody uh, wants to be able to throw their weight around and boss people around and decide what other people can and cannot do. And they've been injured by that. Sometimes they've been injured by people who are just critical all the time. It doesn't seem what they do and how they try to do it, somebody is always criticizing them for it. And sometimes it's for the way that the church can be two-faced. We love to talk about love, that God loves everybody and everybody's welcome. And yet it seems there's always that group of people who are shunned, who are pushed away, who are told we should hate because they don't live up to our idea of what morality is or our, or our idea of what it means to be a Christian. And whatever has caused this pain, it hasn't just happened once and they've walked away. It's happened over and over and over again. And these people finally say, I am done with the hypocrisy of the church. I am done with the ways they keep saying, oh yes, we love God and God is first in our lives and they do everything but, and they leave the church and they want nothing to do with an organized religion again. As I was thinking about the plight of the duns in our nation, it made me think about this woman in our scripture lesson this morning, this woman caught in the act of adultery. Um, when we think about that, you know, this woman has been, was committing adultery, she was with somebody, they grab her, they bring her in public in front of Jesus, and they say, the Bible tells us to stone such women, what do you say? And we imagine that she was terrified. As Christy in our, uh, in our uh, weekly Bible study said, she's, she's wondering if she'll even get to see one last sunset before she dies. And we imagine this woman cowering, tears streaming down her face, um, you know, just begging for somebody to have mercy on her. But I kind of wonder, was she, well, she was, I'm sure, was afraid. But was she sad or was she angry? Was she fed up with the hypocrisy of the religious leaders of her time. I mean, think about this story. We are told that she was caught in the very act of adultery. That means that a group of men, these religious leaders, burst into her room, and she was in bed with a man. And they grab her. 
Did they give her time to put on clothes? Did they give her the decency of at least pulling a sheet around her? And then she watches in astonishment as they look at the man and they wave him out the door. And did he have tears streaming down his face? Oh, I'll never do this again. Was he grabbing up his clothes and trying to cover his nakedness and and running out the door? Or did he stand up and stand over in a corner and watch all this going down? Was he involved in setting up this woman to get caught in the act of adultery? We don't know for sure what happened to the man. All we know is that he isn't brought up on the same charges. And so they grab the woman and they drag her through the streets of Jerusalem and they bring her to Jesus. Jesus has been in Jerusalem for the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. It was a celebrate, a fall harvest celebration. It was also a time to celebrate how God had led the Israelites through the wilderness for 40 years and provided for them. And Jesus has returned to the uh, steps of the temple after the, um, after the celebration, and he is sitting on the steps and he is teaching a crowd. And they bring this woman in front of Jesus and they say, the law tells us, We should stone such women. What do you say? And all of a sudden, the woman realizes this has nothing to do with the fact that she broke the law of Moses. This has nothing to do with these religious leaders trying to protect the morality of the community. This is a trap for Jesus. The Romans have outlawed stoning people for such offenses. If Jesus says, well, we should not stone her because the Romans said we can't stone anybody anymore, then he's seen as um, not supporting the laws of Moses not, um, and or um, also bowing down to the Romans. And if Jesus says, yes, we should stone her, then the Romans are right there watching And they will swoop in, they will arrest him. Either way, these religious leaders get rid of Jesus. He either loses popularity with the crowd or he gets arrested. It was a trap. That's all they care about. I kind of wonder if seeing all of these, this hypocrisy, you know, leaving the man behind, even though he was committing adultery too, dragging her through the streets to shame her, Asking Jesus what his uh, decision should be. Manipulating God's laws just to make Jesus look bad. Did she become a dun at that point? Was she done with the hypocrisy of her church of that time, the religious leaders? Was she standing there, maybe fearful for her life? but indignant at the way she was being treated? Did she stand there uh, defiantly eyeing the religious leaders in the crowd, daring them to pick up a stone and throw it at her? We don't know. But Jesus, he's sitting on the steps. He's um, you know, confronted with this woman caught in the act of adultery. And Jesus, we are told, bends forward and starts riding in the, in the dust. And I've always liked the idea that maybe he was just doodling and that he was creating a dramatic pause. But uh, Christy in our, in our Bible study suggested that he was writing Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, that says, If a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both must be put to death. And if he was writing that then maybe there's a glimmer of hope in this woman's eyes. Because at least somebody recognizes the hypocrisy of these religious leaders and how unfair this situation is for her and for Jesus. Well, the, the leaders are standing there and they're you know, egging Jesus on. Come on, give us an answer. And so Jesus stands up and he says, Let the one who has not sinned cast the first stone. 
Now, they have sinned, haven't they? They are trying to manipulate God's law to get somebody else in trouble who hasn't done anything wrong. They've sinned, haven't they? And we were told Jesus sits back down and he starts drawing in the dirt. And this time, Christy wonders if maybe he was uh, writing Jeremiah 17, 13. They that depart from me, the Lord, shall be written in the earth or in the dust. They have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. As he would write this, he would be saying that they, for taking God's laws and twisting in it and manipulating it and trying to get him in trouble, have, have departed from the Lord. And now their names are written in the dust. And that's, that dust will eventually, the names will get blown away and they won't exist anymore. That is how they are in the eyes of God for this um, abuse of God's laws. But they have forsaken the fountains of living water. Earlier in the week, Jesus had been there in Jerusalem for the Feast of Booths. And according to uh, some rabbis or some sources, there was a tradition that they would go to the Pool of Siloam every day during this feast. They would pour, scoop out water from the um, Pool of Siloam and they would carry it to the temple as a sign of how God, or remembrance of how God provided them water from the stone to provide uh, water for his people when they were in need. And it was also a sign of hope in this coming Savior who would restore God's kingdom on earth. And on the last day, we are told that Jesus stood up in the middle of the temple complex and he shouted out, if, um, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus was saying that if you want true life, if you want that true source of life, it's not going to come from a pitcher of water in the pool of Siloam. You need to come to God through faith in Jesus Christ. And he will provide you living waters. Life that bubbles up out of you and into the lives of others. And so as Jesus is writing on the ground, if he's writing that passage from Jeremiah, he's reminding everybody of that call. If you want true life, come to me. I will restore you to a right relationship with God. And God's life will bubble up out of you. But that those... Who, try, who reject Jesus and are trying to make Jesus look bad or even get Jesus arrested, that they are going to be like the, the names in the dust, blown away. They will not have true life. And we are told that one by one, from the oldest to the youngest, the religious leaders walk away. And Jesus stands up one more time and he looks at the woman and he says, where is everybody? Does no one condemn you? And she says, no. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. It's not that Jesus said what you did, did wasn't wrong. I'm not worried about your sin. Notice he says, I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you to death because Jesus came to give life to all people. In this situation, Jesus did it by standing up for God's justice. God's justice isn't a justice that's manipulated to try and get what we want. God's justice is something that brings life to people that raises them up out of the shame to a position of honor as children of God and gives them life for day-to-day -day living. Jesus stands up and defends the woman, brings justice, God's justice into her life, and risks his own life on her behalf. Because now the religious leaders aren't just trying to make Jesus look bad in, in the eyes of the public, 
Now they're looking for a way to get rid of him, to kill him. But he risks his life to give her God's justice. Do you think that restored her to faith in God and to a faith that would allow her to participate in the life of uh, her religious community again? We aren't told. But that's what Christ calls on us to do. When we see people out there who aren't going to church and we're worried about how we're struggling with numbers and you know, are we going to survive, it's so easy for us to look at the nuns and the um, spiritual but not religious and the duns and say, you need to come back to church. And Well, the church has hurt me. Oh, you, you must be make, you know, making too much of it. That's not the way the, the real church is or that's not the way our church is. Church is important for your everyday life. You have to make a habit of coming back to church week after week. And it's so easy for us to try and convince people why they have to come back to our church. But if they've been hurt by Christians or by the church, then what they need most isn't to be badgered into coming back to a church building. It's to be able to experience God's justice in their life. Somebody to recognize the pain that they've experienced it, to acknowledge it, and to say, God loves you anyway. There was a, uh, a pastor who had an experience, an encounter with a, one of the Duns. Uh, she had started jogging on a daily basis and had found somebody else in the community who uh, would be her jogging partner, and they were helping each other build up to run a 5K. And while they were jogging together, she had learned that uh, he had been in a church. Uh, he had been a, lead, a faithful leader in the church, but he had been hurt so many times that he was done with church. He wanted nothing to do with organized church life anymore. Um, she didn't mention what she did for a living. So they come to their first 5K, they finish the 5K, and afterwards, oh, yeah, good run, you know, complimenting each other. And then he asks the deadly question, so what do you do? What's your job? And she says, well, when I tell you it might be the end of our friendship, he says, why? What are you, a pastor or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that didn't end their friendship. Instead, they continued to jog Together, they continued to go to these 5Ks together. She continued to listen to his stories of pain and of joy. And eventually, they got to the point where she felt comfortable enough to say, hey, would you like to go to church with me? He said, no, I don't want to go back to church. But is there a way I can serve the church? Yeah, we have this food distribution every month. We'd love for you to come and help out with that. And that was the foot in the door. Month after month, he would come. He would help the church with their food distribution. He got to know a congregation that did show God's love and grace and mercy, that did show the justice of God. And eventually, he was able to come back to the church and become a part of an organized uh, body of Christians. That's what Jesus calls us to do, to go out into the world, to meet people where they're hurting, to acknowledge their pain, not try to push it away, and then just to show them God's justice by loving them, giving God's grace to them, lifting them up to a place of honor so that God's living water can be experienced once again in their lives. That is our call in this life. Amen. Let's uh, stand together and uh, sing the doxology as we ask God's blessing on our offerings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And let's remain standing and we'll join together in singing hymn 275, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. be seated. And for our postlude music, uh, Max Henry will play Jesus Calls Us. We are back to our proper praise song, Hallelujah, Praise Ye the Lord. So let's stand as we sing. Um, and remember, it's Hallelujah is praise, rejoice. So Hallelujah, uh, so it's Hallelu, 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 Hallelujah, praise, uh, yeah, praise ye the Lord. It's that simple. Got it? Here we go. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. 
through it. All right. <laughs> and now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.